Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about how to retime your animations for Mogurts. Mmm. Mogurt. Before we get started, the project file for this is available on our website. I'm not really going to go over how the template is built in this tutorial. It's pretty long, and we'll probably do that in a future tutorial. This one is just going to focus on the expression that we're using for retiming. There's also another way to do this if you'd like to check out Evan Abrams tutorial from a couple of weeks ago. I'll leave that in the description down below. This expression code will also be on our website. So you notice that I have these keyframes here and if we drag over this it moves as would be expected until you get to the part where it's supposed to animate out. Nothing happens, at least until we get over here. And that's because this is actually controlled with this duration slider. So at five seconds, which is right here, we should be out. And that something is missing on this thing. Hold on, there's a couple of layers we're missing. Ah, there we go. So that's our entire animation. There's different variants of this expression used, but this is basically the root of it. So let's set this to ludicrous size and we can check it out. So this expression is basically applied to every property that we have keyframes that we wanna retime. The idea for this is that we take the front intro keyframes and the outro keyframes and keep those as is, and the time in between is what we're retiming. So let's take a look at how we did that. I'd also like to note that this is a modified script based on something Dan Edwards had done a while ago. It's similar, but his retimes the whole entire set of keys, so it also retimes the intro and outro, which I didn't want to do. I wanted to keep those as they were animated, so that's why I went with this. All right, so our first line, we're just grabbing this duration from our controller, and then I'm going to set a variable m equal to the markers on the controller layer. As you can see, I've split two markers instead of having three or four, and you do that by holding Option or Alt and dragging. Doing it this way kind of saves us from calculating one of the durations. If you split your marker like that, you automatically get a duration value. So our next thing is we're gonna set anim in, and that's gonna be where our marker starts. So we're taking m.key number one dot time. And remember in this case, keys start at one instead of zero. So that's the first key on the layer and where it's starting at. Then we're gonna set a variable for hold, and that's gonna be our hold point. So that's gonna be anim in, which is that initial time, plus m.key1.duration. So we're taking the value at this first part where the marker starts and adding to it its duration, which is where it ends. So that's right here. Then we're gonna set a variable called animout, and that's gonna be set to m.key2.time. So that's speaking of this marker. And then our out duration is gonna be set to m.key2.duration. And that's so we know how long the outro lasts. I didn't mention it before, but these are obviously spaced out to actually accommodate all the keys in the intro and all the keys in the outro. All right, and then we're gonna set end equal to anim out plus out duration, which gives us this time. So now that we have all of that information, it's time to retime it. So the first thing we're gonna do is check if our time is less than hold. So that's gonna be just this portion, roughly. T is just gonna be time. So nothing is retimed in this front part. And then we have else if time is greater than duration minus out duration. So if you remember, duration is how long we want this thing to be. So if we're at like five seconds, we basically want to subtract this time period right here from that so that we know where we should start adding these keys in. Let's move this over so you can see how that would be. So say this is where we end. This is how long our out duration is. So during that time period, we're going to set T equal to linear. It would be from duration minus out duration, which puts us here. As it goes to duration, which would be here, our new time will be from anim out which is this key, to end, which is this key. So it's effectively like moving these keys over here. And if we're in the middle, right, in this region, T is just going to be equal to hold, which would be this last key. So what the hell is T? Well, T is the value that we're going to reference in the original timing to apply to a value at time function. So let's look at that. So right here we have the value at time and T. So what this whole thing basically does is when we're less than the hold time, which is right here, the value at time will basically be whatever it is right now. So during this part, value at time is equal to time. So this else part here is if we're in the hold time in between. This only happens if we're not at the beginning and we're not where we should be for the outro to start. So the value of T there is the hold point, which is right here. So after everything is animated in, that frame is just what's returned for the rest of it until we start to animate out. So if time is greater than where the outro should start, we then basically remap our time as it goes from whatever duration to out point into the original out point beginning to end. 
which effectively moves these keys until the end of the key is at the end of our duration. So if we made this like 10, this thing would last a whole lot longer all the way to here. So the only issue you would have in putting this into a template is that you can't really set your duration equal to less than your two intro and outro pieces. So you just need to make sure that when you drag this into your essential graphics panel that you actually limit the slider. And that's pretty much it. That's how you retime these keys to fit your own duration. So that now you can go to plaid. So that's it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv and make sure you subscribe because we do a video every week. As always, I am Joe and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. What the hell is this? Now. Now? It's now. When? Now. Can we go back to then? It already happened. When? Then. When, when will then be now? Soon. Oh, okay. Man, we ain't found shit.